And now, in something that should be a little bit familiar to you, introducing part three of my expedition build series, today focusing on Tujin. This is going to again be the same dataset continued from set one. It's important that I used a continuous dataset for the first three videos so that I can kind of break down the profit per hour and get into that in a little bit more detail. Unlike Danik, your strategy for Tujin should vary a lot as the league goes on. By that I mean, as time goes on, certain items will gain value and other items will lose value, and you should adjust your purchasing accordingly. As a couple of basic rules of thumb to get you started, you should generally always buy things that have any decent value whatsoever if they cost lesser artifacts. You'll get more lesser artifacts than you can ever possibly use unless you're willing to just blatantly throw away currency. On the other hand, you should be very sparing with your greater artifacts. Now, if you're only running one or two logbooks, things that you dropped, then you should always focus on haggling. Tujin is very likely to accept between 40 and 60% of the value of the item. If you go too much below that 40%, there's a chance he'll walk away from the trade and not give you the item at all, so I wouldn't go below 50% on any high value items like exalts. On anything that's a little lower, you can go down to 40 and sometimes he'll take it, more likely he'll just get angry at you. So if you want a quick rule of thumb, if you're running one or two logbooks, things that you dropped, start your offer at 50% for high value items or 40% for low value items, and then move it up depending on what his feedback is. Generally speaking, you'll sell between 60 and 70% of your original asking price. On the other hand, if you're running a lot of logbooks, let's just say you spent four or five hours running logbooks and you have a ton of artifacts to use, don't haggle at all on anything that costs lesser currency. Just buy it at whatever the asking price is, because it really doesn't matter. You should haggle for graders, but I'd aim around that 60% sweet spot, because what you want is for him to take your first offer so you can buy more things faster and get back to running more logbooks, thus making more money. When it comes to grand, I'd use similar rules to lesser. Very often, it's easy to get a lot of grand black scythe artifacts. If you're running a little low on them, then don't worry too much. Aim for the 60% mark, but you can also buy a lot of things at full price because they tend to be pretty cheap. Anything that costs 100 or less, I'd just buy it, and anything that costs more, I'd haggle. Then finally, exceptional artifacts are quite a bit rarer. You're generally going to be spending them less frequently, and you're going to be spending them for higher value items, such as exalted orbs, so you should almost always haggle on these. I start at around 50%, so I don't risk Tujin walking away from the deal. Now, in terms of what you buy, there's a simple method for doing it, and a complicated method for doing it. I'll start with a complicated one, because that one I feel needs a little more explanation. So let's say you're being offered a stack of 20 chromatic orbs, and you know that 8 chromatic orbs is 1 in chaos. That entire stack is 2.5 chaos, so you'd kind of mentally remember that, or maybe write it down somewhere on a second monitor, and have a cheat sheet that you can reference of, okay, 8 chromes is 1 in chaos, and do the math from there. Your goal with this should be that every trade you make with him is over one chaos in value. And because prices are constantly shifting, I can't give you a handy cheat sheet for that. You'll have to make that for yourself, and it's going to vary during the league. Early on, chance orbs, alchemy orbs, regret orbs, and chromatic orbs will be a lot more valuable. Whereas late in the league, something like an ancient orb will be worth a lot more, when early on it might have only been worth a couple chaos. On the other hand, if you want the simpler answer, you buy all Chaos and all Exalts regardless of price. You buy most stacked decks, although I wouldn't pay exceptional artifacts for them. In terms of lesser currencies, you want to buy a lot of Fusings, you want to buy things like Scours, Regrets, possibly some Volorbs, although they can be a bit on the expensive side, and of course, Alterations. You maybe don't want to buy Jewelers and Chance as much, although I did as part of my experimentation, and I did make a decent bit of money off of them. In particular, Alteration Orbs, Fusing Orbs, Chromatic Orbs, Chaos Orbs, Scouring Orbs, and Regret Orbs will be a bulk of your profits from the small currencies. For things that aren't currencies, you should keep an eye out for Deception Contracts, as those tend to be valuable. You should keep an eye out for Rare Fossils and Four Socket Resonators. You should keep an eye out for Polished or Higher Scarabs, or any Scarab that's in demand, such as let's just say an Expedition Scarab. You can keep an eye out for higher tier essences, although buying essences is much more of a personal preference. Simulacrum splinters, breach splinters, and legion splinters are all generally good buys. I obviously wouldn't buy something like Vol splinters or Etch splinters, as those are low value, but I would buy Chiyula or Marraketh. Generally, divine orbs aren't a good deal, occasionally you will be offered one at a price that's worth your time, and generally ancient orbs are a good deal. 
You should obviously ignore things like Annul and Harbinger orbs, unless you're an SSF, these are just a waste of your money. For other items that you should keep in mind, Delirious maps tend to be quite valuable. Cluster jewels can be quite valuable, but you will have to check all of them. Occasionally, you'll get something really valuable, like a minion cluster jewel with 12 passives that's item level 84. Something like that can easily sell for in excess of one exalt. Now, I wasn't buying them at the time, but in researching and price checking things, I did find out that breach rings are often worth buying. They're usually item level 83 and 84, and they sell for a few chaos each, all the way up to 10 chaos each if you get an 86. When it comes to heist contracts, you should definitely buy Deception, you should definitely buy Blueprints, most of the rest doesn't matter. And finally, you can also buy Abyss Jewels. Again, you'll have to check the mods, but something like Life with Bow Damage Rolls, or something like Life with Res with Minion Damage, those are things that people want, therefore they'll sell for quite a bit. And if you're enjoying this look at Tujin and how to use his reroll currency, what to prioritize and how to haggle, be sure to leave a like on the video as it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you're curious about how ROG works and want to know more about crafting in general, then I'm going to be releasing a video on ROG that should be out tomorrow or at worst the day after. Be sure to sub to the channel and ring the bell to be notified when I upload that video. And finally, if non-Peary content is your jam, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, where I'm going to be reviewing the game, Kana Bridge of Spirits. It has a cute and very charming art style and a surprisingly sad main story. It's also some of the best open world platforming that I've experienced in a very long time. But for now, let's get back to talking expedition. Now, for the next part of a video, the fact that I've used the same data set here becomes important. Because now, I'm going to be talking about using the Tujin rerolls that I got in my initial part 1 video. Which means, this all continues from that, so if you haven't seen part 1 or part 2, you'll want to watch those before this section, as it'll help to add a lot of context. This is an example of what I got rolling Tujin for about a half hour, I used 113 rerolls, and I basically rolled until I ran out of artifacts. The rerolls were worth 3.2x, and in terms of returns, I got 2.55 raw x, 215 chaos orbs, and 7.75x in random stuff, which is 11.8x returned, 8.6x of which is profit, and it took me 30 minutes. Or about 17x an hour. Remember though, we're going to factor in the time it took us to run these logbooks in just a minute. There is, however, one very big important note on all of this. I was haggling to get a better idea of the ranges that Tujin was willing to accept, so this likely took a little bit more time than it might take you. I definitely haggled for a lot of things that I shouldn't have, as they were listed for lesser black scythe. So, if you're going a little bit faster, and if you have a little better of a plan, you're not experimenting as much, I would guess that you can get a little bit more profit, and it might take you 20 or 25 minutes rather than 30. But let's keep all the numbers the same for this, and look overall at how much I made from running 36 logbooks, then using all of the Danig rerolls, and then using all of the Tujin rerolls. Just as a quick reminder, since I know it's been about two days since I released the first video, I estimated the value of the logbook loot was around 30 exalts. It took me roughly four hours to run the 36 logbooks, and I got what I would consider to be pretty average drops. For more info on that, check out my video on how I ran the logbooks, which will be in the card to this video. So let's just say that I got 30x in value, which counted the 173 burial medallions and 113 exotic coinage. And again, that took me four hours. And also remember that there was an original cost of 8.14x for the logbooks and 2.7x for the split beasts to split the medved book and the sun logbooks. Which means if we just look at the loot from the logbooks, it was originally 30 minus 8.14 plus 2.7. So 19.6x. Now from there, I used all the burial medallions, which means the 19.6 loses another 10.8. But I got back 17.9 exalts in additional things from using those burial medallions, so we now gain 17.9. And finally, I used the Tujin rerolls, which is another 3.2x, but I gained 11.8 back, which means, in total, I ended up with 34.86, or let's just round that up to 35 exalts in profit. It took me 4 hours and 40 minutes, which let's just round that up to 5 hours. So in total, for 5 hours of running logbooks, doing everything that I've outlined in this video and in the previous two videos, I was making an average of 7 exalts an hour. There will be some variance to this. You might not always have a boss logbook, you might get a few more or a few less bosses in any given sample size, but overall this felt pretty average. 
in some ways, Vitujin was actually a little bit below average because usually I was getting three raw exalts instead of two, but I got more resonators and that kind of balances things out. So at the end of the day, this isn't a perfect sample size, but I would consider it to be fairly average. And if you want to know a number, just go 7x an hour. Tomorrow's video is going to be a little bit different. Tomorrow's video is not going to focus on profit per hour. And the reason for this is it's very hard to quantify ROG. Sometimes I'll use 100 rerolls, and I'll end up with a few exalts in value. Other times I'll use 100 rerolls, and I'll end up with 40 or 50 exalts in value, because I hit one or two big items that really sell very easily. Instead, what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow is how to use ROG's crafting and the crafting process more so than the value of the items. But for now, I hope you found this guide to Tujin and this look at Expedition and profitability in general to be helpful. If you have any more questions about Expedition, or if you want to share some of the things that you've done with Expedition and what Expedition helped you afford, be sure to share them down in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the Discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. For more general gaming content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, and if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.